Yes, guys, starting with question number 9. <coughs> guys, question number 9 has a part of diluted EPS and basic EPS in it. We'll deal with those topics when we are dealing with standards. So, not as of now. As of now, we'll just limit ourselves to only computation of your employee compensation expense. What is the impact of such options on your basic EPS and diluted EPS? We'll identify later on. Number of shares are 4 lakh. Grant date is 1st April 2008. And number of employees covered are 600. Number of options granted per employee are 100. With a vesting condition of 3 years continuous employment. Nominal value 10 rupees. Excise price being 45. Fair value being 15. Vesting date is 31st March 2011. And exercise date being 31st May 2012. Position given to you as on 31st March 09. Only consider those which are relevant for us. For calculating this. Number of employees expected to satisfy the vesting condition is 540. Number of employees who actually left are 15. Unnecessary for me. All I have to take is 540. That's it. Your profit before uh, you know amortization of ESOP cost and fair value per share. All those items are required for basic EPS and diluted EPS. Ignore those two values. Position as on 31st March 2010. 552 employees are expected to satisfy the service condition. And finally, last year, number of employees actually satisfying the vesting condition are 554. On 31st May 2012, 550 employees exercised and 4 employees have not exercised the option. Show employee compensation account and employees stock option outstanding account from 2008-9 to 10-11. So account also you have to show. So let's start identifying the provisions to be maintained. Grand date is 1st April 2008. Eight. So my first balance sheet date is 31st March 09. 31st March 10, second balance sheet date. Third balance sheet date is 31st March 2011. Number of options. Expected to satisfy vesting. Yes, guys. Year 1. On 31st March 2009, I am expecting 540 employees to satisfy vesting. Each op employee is given 100 options. So, 54,000 options. Next, 552. 55,200 options. Last year, 554 employees are entitled, so 55,400 options. 100 options per employee. Multiply this with the fair value. Per option, fair value is 15. That will give us the total employee compensation expense. In the first case, 8,10,000. In the second case, 8,20,000. Next one is 8 lakhs. 31,000. Vesting period is already given to us as 3 years continuous employment. So EC cumulative into 1 by 3, 2 lakh 70. Into 2 by 3, 8 lakh 10,000 into 1 by 3, 8 lakh 28,000 into 2 by 3, 2 by 3 is 5 lakh 52,000. Last one, anyways, 3 by 3, 8 lakh 31,000. Already provided in previous year. Strike a balance, you will get to be provided in current year. Next.
nil so to be provided in current year first year is 2,70 2,70 already provided in the previous year what is to be provided is 2,82 5,52,000 already provided in year 1 and year 2 so to be provided is 1,79 or 2,79 These are the amounts, then go for the accounts. You got the amount of the provision to be maintained every year. Prepare the both prepare both the accounts, yes outstanding and EC. Employee compensation expense. Employee stock option outstanding account. First date is 31st March 09. To employee stock option outstanding. First year 270,000. 31st March 2010. Same entry to years outstanding 282,000. Last year 31st March 2011. To years outstanding 279,000. You have to keep closing it every year by transferring it to PNL. Thirty first March zero nine by PNL two lakh seventy thousand. Thirty first March two thousand ten by PNL two lakh eighty two thousand. 31st March 2011 by PNL 279,000. Bring it down to ES outstanding. First date 31st March 09 by ECE. Employee compensation expense 270. Bring the balance to the next year 31st March 09. Balance brought down two lakh seventy. Second year by EC two lakh eighty two. Carried down balance for the second year is five lakh fifty two. Bring down the balance for the next year. Maintain the provision 31st March 2011. Employee compensation expense is 2,79 lakh. Balance it. Balance carried down at the end of the year. Total provision maintained is 8,31. Last year for the exercise. When is the exercise happening? 31st May 2012. Not next year guys. Next year just bring down the balance and balance it. 31st March 2012. There is nothing as such. Balance brought down 8,31,000.
balance carried down 8 lakh 31 thousand. I'll bring down the balance on 1 4 2011 and balance it on 31st March 2012. Bring it down by one more year when you can settle it. 1st April 2012. Balance brought down 8 lakh 31 thousand. Check. Employees exercising are 550 to equity share capital on 31st May 2012 to equity share capital and securities premium calculate 15 15 into 550 employees into 100 options balance take it to general reserve. Or find out the general reserve, identify the other one as balancing figure. General reserve is easier. Four employees did not exercise. 100 options per employee, 400 options. 400 options into 15 rupees is 6000. So this should be 8,25. You can calculate this anyways. 550 into 100 into 15. 550 employees, 100 options per employee into 15 rupees being the fair value. 8,25,000. Yes guys, now comes SAR guys. In SAR the only thing that changes is instead of getting your ESO outstanding we will get SAR, provision for SAR account. The account name will now change to provision for SAR. That is nothing but stock appreciation rights. And one more change will be the final settlement entry. When you get the final settlement entry, directly you will write to cash. And remember, there will not be any lapse. There will not be any lapse after the options are vested. After the rights are vested, then compulsory there is a cash payment. There cannot be any lapse during it. Because it's a cash payment which is being received. There is no employee who will say, I don't want cash. So, continue, come on. Read the point, question number 10. A company announced a stock appreciation right on 1st April 2008 to each of its 525 employees in the scheme gives the employee a right to claim cash payment equivalent to excess of market value of company shares on the exercise date over the exercise price of 125 rupees per share in respect of 100 shares subjected to a continuous employment of 3 years. 
So uh, what does uh, whatever is the market price in excess of 125 rupees will be received by each employee to the extent of 100 shares. And he's saying three years is a continuous employment that is a vesting condition existing. SAR is exercisable after 31st March 2011. That is three years from the grand date. But before 36 2011, that is within three months. Fair value of SAR was 21, 23 and 24 during three years. In 2008-9, the company estimated that 2% of the employees will leave the company annually. And this was revised to 3% in 2009-10. Actually, 15 employees left in 2008-9, 10 employees left in 9-10 and 8 employees left in 2010-11. The SAR therefore actually vested to 492 employees and on 36 2011 the SARs were exercised having an intrinsic value of 25 rupees per share. Show the provision for SAR account by fair value method. Come on guys, let's try to maintain the fair value of SAR. Do not use the word options now. Everywhere, wherever we are using options, we will use now the word right. Questions to be solved in a similar pattern guys. It's only the nomenclature that changes the name that is changing. That's it and nothing else. One is the grand date 1408. So what are the three balance sheet dates? 31st March 9. 31st March 10. 31st March 11. Number of rights. Expected to vest. Come on guys. How many rights were granted? 525 employees. They got 100 share rights. So. Yeah. Once again. What are the four features? In 2008-9, the company estimates 2% 2, 2 for feature of the employees to leave the company annually. Guys, for 2000, as on 31st March 2009, I already know that how many employees left first year? 15 employees already left. And I am expecting my annual for features will be 2% for year 2 and year 3. How will we calculate? 525 minus 15. Already 15 left. Into how much is the four features we are estimating? 2%. 0.98 into 0.98 year 2 and year 3. 100 options or 100 rights. Second year. More how many people left? In addition to the 15, 15 people who left, another 10 people left in 2009 10. 525 minus 15 minus 10. Third year, I'll estimate to how much for features. During the next year, the estimated for features are revised to 3%. 0.97 into 100 options. Last year, actual figure he gave it to you, they are vested to 492 employees. 492 employees, 100 rights per employee. You will get the number of rights expected to vest. Multiply with the fair value of the right. <coughs> fair value of right. is given you the fair values which are fluctuating 21, 23, 24. Why is this fluctuating? That means the market price per share is increasing. Anything in excess of 125 will be received. So basically the market price kept on increasing. That's the reason why the fair value of right is also increasing.
Fill up guys, multiply and fill up the figures. Check your answers guys, check your final answers. Once you get the amount of provision to be created, you can go for the account, SAR out, provision for SAR account. No EC account required, only provision for SAR, which is similar to the ESO outstanding account we have been seeing. First entry EC to provision for SAR. First entry on 31st March 09 by EC EC to SAR 3,42,860. Balance it and take it forward for the next year. Next year provision to be maintained on 31st March 2010 by EC again 400807 balance it towards the end of the year. Seven forty three six sixty seven. Again bring it down during the year. Beginning of the year, 1 for 2010. Balance brought down. 743,667. 
31st March 2011. Last year, EC 4,37,133. 31st March 2011. Balance carried down 11,8800. That's it. Bring it down to the next year. 1-4-2011. Balance brought down 11,80,800. Check the exercise. Check the exercise. What did he say? On 36-2011, SAR was exercised having an intrinsic value of 25. So, 36-2011... To cash or bank. Settlement should be in cash or bank. How many? 492 employees. 100 options per employee. Settled at 25 rupees. Not 24. At the time of settlement, the intrinsic value was 25. So that means on that day, some extra provision should be created. Because my provision was calculated on the basis of 24. 24. I am falling 1 rupee short. So, 49,200. 11,30,000. No, 12,30,000. 12,30,000. 49,200 is a balancing figure. 1 rupee shortage because I created provision on the basis of only 49 rupees. So, 24 rupees, not 25 rupees.
Yes, guys, turn into the last one. Eleventh question. A company announced a share-based payment plan for its employees on 1408 subjected to a vesting period of 3 years. By the plan, the employee can either claim a difference between the exercise price of 150 and the market price on those shares on the vesting date in respect of 10,000 shares or can subscribe to 12,000 shares at an exercise price of 150 rupees per share subjected to a lock-in period of 5 years. On 1 2008, 2008 the fair value after considering the restrictions was 27. The fair value estimates without considering the restrictions are 31.5, 32.7 and 34 respectively at the end of 2008, 9, 9, 10 and 10, 11. Show important accounts in the books of company if the company opts for cash settlement or equity settlement. So basically you are supposed to solve the problem in both the methods, SAR as well as ESOP. So ESOP is saying that basically they will take 12,000 shares having an exercise price of 150 rupees per share. But if it was in case of SAR is saying that 10,000 shares taking at an exercise price of 150 rupees per share. Now he's saying that without market restrictions the market fair value of the option is 30. After considering the market restriction, what restriction? That 5 years lock-in period. Only for ESOP you have that restriction. So without restriction for SAR, with restriction for ESOP, without restriction the options are given to you, fair value of options. But with restrictions we don't know. With restrictions he is saying that one indicator he gave, without restriction if it was 30, with restriction if it is, it will be 27 he said. I can consider it in two ways. Either I can say that the cost of the restriction is 3 rupees per share option or I can say it is 10% 10, 10 also. Even if I take it will be lower by 10% also it is satisfying the condition. 30% minus 10% is 27. Or I can say 30 minus 3 is also 27. So your wish. Either take the reduction of 3 rupees or take a reduction as 10%. Either of the cases your problem is right. Okay. So that is how you can estimate the fair values after, the, after considering the restriction. I think taking 10% would get you into some problem because of the you know, number of decimal places that you get try to take it in 3 rupees try to take the reduction as 3 rupees start with that statement fair value of the option with restrictions is equal to fair value of the option with restriction is equal to fair value without restriction minus rupees 3 Fair value without restriction minus 3 rupees. Three years starting from 1408, the balance sheet dates will be 31st March 09. Maintain broader columns, 31st March 2010 and 31st March 2011. Maintain broad columns because we need to solve it by both ESOP as well as SAR. Number of options or rights expected to vest. Fair value of right or option. I will maintain two columns, ESOP and SAR, there is no lapses which he is talking about, he is directly putting straight forward 10,000 in SAR and 12,000 in ESOP. 12,000 in ESOP, 10,000 in SAR. Fair values, without restriction fair values are applicable for SAR. The restriction of 5 years lock-in period is only there for ESOP. SAR values I can fill it up. 
32.5, 32.7 and 34. And what did you say with restriction? Always deduct 3 rupees. Deduct 3 rupees 28.5, deduct 3 rupees 29.7, deduct 3 rupees 31. Like balance, vesting period is 3 years throughout.
Check your answers guys. So first year to be provided 1,14,000 and 1,5,000. Already provided in the previous year 1,14,000 and 1,5,000 deduct. So to be provided in the second year will be 1,13,600. Already provided in the previous year 2,37,600 and 2,18,000. So to be provided in the current year is 1,34,400 and 1,22,000. These are the amounts to be provided each year. Is asking you to show important books. So prepare. Show one ESOP account. ESOP outstanding. SAR. I'm only showing ESOP and SAR guys. Required you can show even your ESOP accounts, sorry, ECE accounts as well. There is nothing much to be done as far as ECE is concerned, so I am just cutting short. ESOP account and SAR is what I am showing now. It's done. 31st March 09 by EC first year so piece 1,14,000 will be brought down to the next year balance brought down on 1st April 09 1,14,000 then on 31st March 09 again I create a provision by employee compensation expense 123,600 again I bring down by balance brought down 2,37,600 on 1,4,2010 31st March 2011 again I create a provision by ECE Last year's provision I create is 1,34,400 bringing down a balance to the next year as by balance brought down 3,72 balance carried down entries I haven't written 31st March 09 balance carried down 1,14 31st March 2010 balance carried down is 2,37,600 31st March 2011 by balance carried down 3,72,000 bring it down to the next year there are no lapses entire thing exercised to equity share capital and securities premium otherwise you don't even write need to write the exercise entry just leave it there he did not talk about the exercise you can forget about that that's it you can close it there if you want to write the exercise you can complete the entry no problem come to the SAR first entry to be passed on 31st March 09 by employee compensation expense SARs first value is 1,5,000 first year close bring it down to the next year 1,5,000 balance brought down 1,5,000 provision to be created during the current year by EC on 31st March 2010 second year provision is 1,13,000 Bring it down to the next year by balance brought down 
31st March 2011 again <coughs> by C yeah, balance brought down is how much? 2 lakh 18 at the end of second year. Last year provision is 1 lakh 22. Bring it down to the next year 1 lakh 1 for 2011. Balance brought down 3 lakh 40. This will be settled in cash. I haven't written the balances entries. Oh, 31-3-2009 Balance carried down 1,5,000 31-3-2010 By balance carried down 2,18 31st March 2011 Balance carried down is 3,40 Finally, cash settlement. Yeah, one second, guys. Yep. So, final cash settlement to cash. Right as to cash or bank, anything is fine. 3,40 cash settlement, and that will settle the entries. Settlement date not identifiable guys, either you can write it on the same date.